Hello everyone, welcome back to Synchro Secrets, the one to go place for all things artistic swimming. My name is Agata and today I will be diving into a very important topic for all synchro parents and coaches out there. Communication. Building a strong relationship between parents and coaches is crucial for the success and well-being of athletes. So let's explore some effective ways to communicate in the world of artistic swimming. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss any of my videos. All right, let's start. I know that especially as a young coach, talking to the parents of your athletes might seem very scary. Some interactions are straightforward and some conversations can be quite challenging, ending up in a confrontation. When I started my coaching career, I struggled to communicate with parents and also even with some athletes. It took me many years of trial and error and figuring out what would work best in certain situations and I feel like I'm still learning. I think that communication skills should be taught at school but obviously they are not so we have to figure things out by ourselves. First and foremost, setting clear expectation is the key to communication. As scary as it might seem, Setting up a meeting at the beginning of the season to talk to the parents is the best approach. Coaches and parents should have a shared understanding of the goals and expectations for the athletes. This includes training frequency, competition schedules and the overall commitment required. After the meeting, you can invite the parents to approach you individually and they can share their questions and insecurities and all the issues that they might find and address it to you. Coaches, keep in mind that parents do not usually know about the sport and what is required to get the best results. It might be a good idea to make an introduction to the sport and its most important pillars. For example, create a presentation and show it to the parents. And also, don't forget to share with them your long-term goals and your short-term goals so everyone is updated. As well as expectations of the athletes and what you will keep in mind when picking the swimmers to be in the routine. At the end of the day, we only have eight spots in the team. Parents, don't hesitate to talk to the coaches before or after the practice. Of course, it is very nice to give some heads up to the coach of your intentions so the coach can prepare for the conversation and not kind of be in the rush to be somewhere else. Parents, make sure that you kindly express your concerns or expectations so you can open a friendly dialogue with the coach. Regularly discuss progress, concerns and any adjustments needed in the training plan. By the way, I will be very interested to hear your stories about parrot coach communication and how do you manage the conflicts. Let me know in the comments. Now let's talk about some effective communication techniques so we can create a positive environment for our athletes. Coaches and parrots, practice active listening. Understand each other's perspective and concerns. This helps in building trust and collaboration. It is never fun to feel unheard or to cut each other out in the middle of the sentence. When providing feedback, make it constructive. Parents, there is no point in telling someone that they are a bad coach. This will only create resentfulness and avoidance of the next conversation. Make sure that you focus on the outcomes and that you focus on the approach and what can be done in this situation rather than blaming each other. This ensures growth-oriented approach and fosters and creates more understanding. Coaches, keep parents in the loop with regular updates on their child's progress. It can be done by sending photos and videos or by making a progress diagram at the end of the season with all competitions in figures outlined there together with the strong and weaker side of each athlete. Parents, make sure that you inform the coaches about your child's well-being or other commitments that they might have before the practice. Challenges will arise in any sports journey. Let's explore how we can handle them effectively. Make sure that you address the conflict promptly and with respect. Schedule a meeting where you can come to a common ground and understanding. And remember, both sides usually want what's best for the athlete. This way of thinking helped me to step in their shoes and since then I have been better equipped to resolve any conflict. Coaches and parents should work together to provide an emotional support during setbacks and victories. Creating a team environment should include athletes, coaches and parents. This way everyone can contribute and help each other out. Okay, so that's all from me. I have shared some tips on effective communication between coaches and parents. Remember, a strong and positive communication between parents and coaches can create a nurturing 
environment for the athletes. We all want the best for the athletes, so keep that in mind. And if you like this video, make sure you give it thumbs up and you subscribe to this channel so you never miss any of my videos. That's it for today. Bye!